organized by Ayurveda Max, sponsored by Dr. P. Alikuti's Cortical Ayurveda Pharmacy. Dr. P. Alikuti's Cortical Ayurveda Pharmacy, KAP, has been a part of its mother concern, Dr. P. Alikuti's Cortical Ayurveda and Modern Hospital, since 1965. KP manufactures around 400 classical products and 40 proprietary medicines in their GMP and ISO certified production unit. They develop ancient formulations into proprietary medicines after a series of tests and research studies conducted in their R&D department and modernized medical laboratory. Into Ayurveda Map, Ayurveda Map has started its activities in 2016 and was officially inaugurated by respected Dr. P.M. Varya Sir in 2017. We had started with in-hand practical sessions, starting with Mamayu, Marma Bandam, and uh, uh, cosmetological sessions like Varnium, Agnia. And due to the pandemic and with warm responses from our participants, we had converted to online sessions starting from Varnium, Pajaga, which was an online certificate course on Ayurveda dermatology, Gala on Ayurvedic management of thyroid disor disorders, and Kriti on online sessions on Ayurveda products making, Tana on therapeutic yoga, Naina on common eye disease management, Vipha the sessions on cosmetic creation, Puchya the sessions on Ayurveda gynecology, Medhas session on Ayurvedic management of obesity and diabetes, Pipra, Reksha, Varnyam, Chara, etc. And finally, we had introduced Swathyaya to support students academically during the pandemics. We had provided recorded classes, detailed notes, one-to-one -one doubt clearance, question paper and research article discussions. And our upcoming sessions, the postgraduate diploma in Ayurveda Nutrition. This is a one-year online course. Uh, some, some of the syllabus outline is uh, nutrition and its concepts, exploration of nutrition and dietary concepts in Ayurveda Samhitas. We have also included nutrition during different stages of life, women health and nutrition, geriatric nutrition, clinical nutrition, sports nutrition, and how to prescribe a diet and how to give diet counseling to the patient, food and drug interaction, the cultural practices on food across the world, the newer emerging topics such as nutraceuticals, nutrigenomics, nutrigenetics, food supplements, designing and incorporation of Ayurveda, also the designing recipes using Ayurveda concepts. So for more details, you may contact Dr. Jasul Alingal on 944-77-80018. Now moving on to today's session, the topic of today's session is Ayurveda Pediatric Dermatology. And for taking the sessions, we have none other than Dr. Roshni Ma'am, who's the Professor and Head, Department of Kaumara Bhritya, Government Ayurveda College, Kannur. She had completed her BAMS from Government Ayurveda College, Tirvanathapuram, and her first PG in Samhita and Siddhanta in 2002, second PG in Kaumara Bhritya in 2009. Also, she had done her PhD in Kela University in Childhood Autism in 2020. She has, she's a recipient of Best Dr. Atreya Award Award in 2019 by Government of Kerala for her contributions in the field of Ayurvedic pediatrics. Also, she was the best project coordinator in 2019 by the Government of Kerala for the activities in connection with Snehadhara project, an Ayurvedic management of developmental disabilities in children. We are so honored to have you here, ma'am, and I welcome you for today's session. Over to you, ma'am. Hello. Hope I am audible. Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am. It's visible, ma'am, but not in a full screen mode.
Hey, very warm good evening to one and all. And outset, I thank the organizers uh, for conducting uh, a very nice series of seminars. And I'm so happy that it's an open seminar and uh, delegates uh, can be enrolled there without a fee of cost. And I'm happy that uh, it's practice among uh, the students, I mean, I mean the BAMS graduates. And uh, I thank for inviting me or uh, I am extremely obliged to be a part of this Ayurvedic map. And my to today's topic of presentation is um, uh, pediatric dermatology. As all of you know that it's very vast topic. So uh, I thought I'll be concentrating uh, on uh, atopic dermatitis, which is uh, the very important part of pediatric dermatology. And uh, it's like a Jura chapter while dealing with the pediatric dermatology. As we deal with the Jura, uh, it contains all the do's and don'ts. It comprises all the uh, treatment uh, options that uh, what, everything that to be cared and do's and don'ts are comprised of that. So uh, we'll go detail into the topic dermatitis management. So it, uh, it comprises almost all the topics of pediatric dermatology. Okay. So so atopic dermatitis is the most common pediatric and dermatological condition which comes to a pediatric practitioner. And uh, it's a non-contagious, chronic, relapsing, inflammatory skin lesion. As I think everyone will be familiar with that condition, almost uh, it is always uh, accompanied by an atopic triad, where the babies will be having a history of allergic rhinitis very commonly and uh, having a history of uh, two or three times of bronchial asthma will be the slowly the skin manifestations will be setting in. So the atopic triad is bronchial asthma, allergic rhinitis, and this atopic dermatitis. Uh, Hello, ma'am base level. Mm, if any suggestions or any interest, the hallmarks of uh, atopic dermatitis, uh, that uh, when should you diagnose it as an atopic dermatitis? It will be a uh, chronic skin condition with relapsing skin inflammation and the epidermal uh, barrier function will be disturbed. And if you go on uh, testing for the Ig level for the allergic markers, it will be highly elevated as well. And it is seen that more, almost 15 to 30 percentage of children are affected with this atopic dermatitis. And it happens in the early months of life. Usually the baby after one or two months itself uh, complain that the baby is having rashes on, on either side of the cheek. So usually first onset, uh, less than six months, and uh, at least by two years, baby will be having an onset. And usually, is it visible now? This slide? Yes, ma'am. And the prevalence has actually doubled or tripled for, uh, during this last three decades. Maybe due to that increased exposure of pollutants or allergens and uh, reducing exclusive, uh, reducing habit of exclusive breastfeeding, maybe due to that more percentage of working parent, working mother. Of foods other than breast milk. Uh, like in three months or four months, early introduction of other foods, when the gut is not ready to accept such food. And uh, increased awareness of atopic dermatitis has also uh, contributed to that diagnosis. So uh, to speak about atopic dermatitis, 
it is having a genetic backup. at the outset the baby the baby is having a genetic backup along with that allergens are functioning as the sannikrishta nidana that the allergens are actually only triggering factors the base etiology performs the genetic backup and immune dysregulation is the uh, leading to an epidem epidermal barrier break and so a further secondary infection with other bacteria everything is the making the picture Hmm. Uh, more complicated so a genetic etiology precipitated by allergens immune dysregulation and the skin barrier interrupted these four things are the main main sorry my slide is not changing okay and you can see the global prevalence of atopic dermatitis is widely spread across the world so uh, india is naturally prone for that and i think everyone feels familiar with that role of filaggrin gene filaggrin gene in the uh, production of atopic dermatitis the filaggrin gene is supposed to maintain the integrity of the skin Mm, but this filaggrin gene is impaired and that's a root cause so this filaggrin gene is supposed to regulate that trans epidermal water loss the, or the snikha bhava of the skin or rasa uh, rasa sarada or twet sarada is supposed to be maintained by this filaggrin gene regulating the trans epidermal water loss and uh, regulating the level of lipids in the stratum corneum that's a snikhada of the tok mm, is also regulated by gene so uh, when the gene is mutated that snikha bhava of stratum corneum is lost so naturally the skin becomes extremely dry and what happens now uh, extreme water loss happens from the epidermal epidermis layer so again the ruksha bhava of the tok increases and small cracks happen epidermal barrier it is disrupted small cracks happen in between and it serves as a portal of entry for all this allergens pathogens chemicals everything so when we bathe the baby with this uh, or a soap having increased ph or any external application or even uh, like uh, that Uh, cloth can also act as an allergen itself especially the use of soap with increased ph break down that epidermal barrier and again accelerates the entry of these allergens and pathogens in the skin leading to secondary infection in atopic dermatitis so what happens now when an allergen or pathogen enters uh, the skin uh, the inflammatory reaction happens and the inflammatory reactions will release Uh, as you all know inflammatory markers like histamines and cytokines which cause a local inflammation in the skin and when this inflammation uh, is long standing this inflammation gets deep seated and this inflammatory uh, uh, histamines can even uh, trigger the inflammation or uh, infl- hand over that inflammatory mechanism to these nerve fibers as well so this n nerve fibers also also neuro get inflamed and we get we call it as neurogenic inflammation so each mechanism so that is a like kandu that itching mechanism can happen from this epidermis layer that is histamine triggered uh, epidermal ep- inflammatory markers can uh, trigger that itching and also this nerve endings get inflamed and inflamed and this inflammation via the nerve endings can hand over this impulse to, to the brain cortex also so there are two areas of itching actually that each in each from the brain which is initiated from by the neurons so uh, we usually seen in a clinical scenario that the skin is inflamed or skin is dry the baby is having itching it is okay but in another scenario we can see that we have managed the case and and the skin is perfectly okay now no reason to have an itching but still the baby is having itching especially they say that 
uh, when the baby is asleep, half the way the baby will wake up and uh, start itching. The skin will be intact, but the baby will be having se severe itching, and uh, by the process of itching, the skin get disrupted. So that's that is brain itch, and the other itch, uh, other condo is originating from that skin inflammation. So that's a mechanism of each pathway that origins from the brain as well. I'm not going into the details of the pathology as we are not concerned. I am planning to elaborate the Ayurvedic management protocol here. So I am skipping all the slides. Now the morphology and distribution. Usually uh, three types are the, usually three types are the, that infantile type, Infantile type is generally very acute and lesions are mainly on the face and extensor aspects of the limbs. That is extensor aspect of both these limbs. It is much more severe case. And the first area of in involvement is usually the face. And next, uh, the childhood type only depends upon the classification only is depending upon the uh, time of onset. Nothing more than that. In the treatment, we are not much concerned about that. And the area of involvement is having some affinity with this type. That's all. The management remains the same. So I think I can skip this slide. My slide is not changing at times. Okay. Okay. So the diagnosis of atopic dermatitis uh, is based on Hanifin and Achka's criteria. Uh, so whether to diagnose it is AD or not. So it has to satisfy at least three major criteria and uh, three minor. Uh, so the major criteria is pruritis, which is the most common acute stage of atopic dermatitis. And the characteristic morphological distribution, like on the extensor aspect of limbs, on the face, on the trunk and all, the characteristic morphological description, uh, distribution will be the, and the relapsing attitude will be the, and the personal history or family history of atopic disorders, like mm, atopic uh, rhinitis or bronchial asthma. And onset is usually less than two years. That's a major, major criteria, five in number. You have to satisfy any three of these major criteria. And the minor criteria is a long list, early age of onset, cirrhosis, uh, PAMA hyperlinearity, immediate skin test reactivity, and all. A long list of uh, major minor criteria is there, I think. No need to go into detail. And uh, I said, nah, the Sanyi Krishna Nidana is uh, allergens work as a Sanyi Krishna Nidana. So while managing the disease, we should be very thorough with the list of allergens, which can trigger the disease. So uh, among the triggering factors, the first and prime important is a stress. You may think that the pediatric age group of children are having less stress. Usually, uh, I see the comments that childhood is the most wonderful uh, period of life and we had enjoyed the childhood very nicely. But just rewind your childhood. You had your own stress now. At that time of child, maybe the factor for stress is very minute. When you com compare with the stress factor at your age, when you are adolescent or when you are an adult, uh, maybe that factor which caused the stress in uh, in childhood seems to be very low now, but at that age of childhood, maybe the baby is five years and uh, his papa is denying him chocolates or papa or uh, mommy is not uh, pampering him as per his expectation. Maybe it seems very silly to you, but that, uh, that factor is causing much stress in that baby. Don't underestimate the level of stress in that baby because uh, Kids are always dependent and are on adult, very dependent on adults. And any mood fluctuations or any emotional disturbances which the adults show to the child, like mama will be angry somewhere, sometime.
are not on a good mood. So again, that is creating a stress is the main index. And next comes the allergens. Allergens can be food allergens, external, uh, external clothing or any external chemical allergens. Anything can be the allergen. Then, then sweat and excessive saliva can also because uh, usually babies uh, Am I audible? Am I clear? Yes, ma'am, you are audible, but your voice is breaking in between. Is it? Is it clear now? Yes, ma'am, it's clear. Okay. And excess saliva can also act as an allergen. You can see the allergic uh, skin, atopic skin lesions around and the oral cavity, which is usually triggered by saliva uh, when there is excess drooling in small kids. And even sweating areas like axilla can also a predisposing site for this atopic dermatitis. Again, uh, allergic irritants. Among the irritants, I'll first say that uh, that chemical detergents which we use for washing the clothes and antiseptic detergents, especially that like that tall, which we use for washing the skin, the clothes of babies, are the uh, well known notorious skin irritants. So, if you are using a uh, chemical detergent or an antiseptic lotion like that, make sure that you are washing the clothes again in plain water uh, before using it for the baby and again dry skin so this atopic dermatitis babies having atopic dermatitis as i told you they are having a genetic backup so the skin permeability and the rukshatwak will be the genetically the baby will be having rukshatwak so uh, that dry skin have to be managed uh, then and the before having a chance to have a secondary infection so manage the dry skin or else it will uh, go into cyclic of events like mm, secondary infection and all. Then hormonal imbalances, especially it happens during the adolescent phases and all, during the premenstrual, postmenstrual period also, they will be having triggering thing. And uh, the weather and climate also acts as a trigger. So uh, I kept this slide especially to help you uh, to make you familiarize with the scoring system of atopic dermatitis. When some atopic dermatitis patients are coming to you, you have to, uh, before treating, make sure that you have assessed the baby very well. Because now, uh, if you are not going to... Um, if you are not going to uh, assess this... Uh, severity of atopic dermatitis, then during that next visit, you may feel that baby is feeling better, the skin has come down, but uh, you should mark which all areas are involved in the primary visit. Otherwise, uh, mama will be saying a vague comment that, ah, it is a bit better, but not that good. So this CORAD index for atopic dermatitis is a free download scoring system, which is uh, available in the net. So, scorat, the picture is given that, and the area of the trunk represents 18 percentage, the four front of upper limb representing 4.5, back 4.5 and all. It's a very self-explanatory scoring system. Anyone can use that. Uh, so, it will be easy to uh, quantify your results during the tre your treatment protocol. It's not uh, only for Ayurvedic management. Uh, I feel that every system when you manage, uh, it is better to make it make the result quantifiable so that you can also be clear with that results and the patients will also be comfortable to communicate with you. Again, my slide is getting stuck.
Now is it okay? Yes, ma'am, it's visible. Okay, uh, for ad scoring, uh, apart from uh, uh, that uh, intensity of the system, that is whether the erythema is a uh, whether edema or a or any lichenification or dryness, anything will be the can score it like mild, mild uh, absent, mild, moderate, and severe. And all the subjective symptoms like pruritis and sleep pattern also can be scored because sleep is scored. They have to be scored because this itching will is going to disrupt the speech, so it also need to be scored. So hmm, coming to the treatment of atopic dermatitis. Uh, you can search any literature and you can see that there is no exact cure for atopic dermatitis, though in our N number of treatments are available, no exact cure is the uh, modern medicine goes on narrating many of the steroid managed steroid external applications and internal therapies as well uh, to uh, just pacify that exacerbations, but uh, it is uh, really ineffective in managing that underlying skin uh, deformity. So uh, we have to uh, plan the treatment in two modes. That is managing the acute manifestations and then managing the underlying dry skin. So two uh, management modes should be selected. So in Ayurvedic platform, uh, we should consider the uh, treatment protocols of the serpum here because that acute, man acute manifestation of atopic dermatitis mimics that classical narration of Visarpa, uh, having that eruptive phase with uh, secondary infections and all. And we should also consider the uh, classical narration of certain types of pushta in that. And also, naturally, the Kashyabas goes on elaborating that pattern of um, uh, atopic dermatitis and exfoliative skin lesions under the category of Charmadala. And uh, he very beautifully narrates that this charmaloga, charmadala is having a, is a kula jaroga. That is familial disposition is very, uh, very nice, we, uh, is mandatory in the manifestation of charmadala. And uh, almost the description goes parallel with that of, uh, classical description of atopic dermatitis as well. So I'll skip that. Uh, huh sloka part, I'll be go, skipping that theory part because we are man, targeting on the clinical management. So uh, coming to that classical description of uh, Charmadala, uh, as I told earlier, that underlying skin is due to filagrin gene defect, it's a dry skin. So vata dominant, even though sannipadiga skin disease, it's a skin disease because the involvement of all three doshas are that. But the dominant dosha is vata dominant sannipadiga skin disorder with the sahaja or kulaja factors because family history is very much positive uh, and genetic etiology is already discussed here. So it's positive. And uh, stanya dosha, shira dosha or ahara dosha acts as a precipitating factor for that. I think also we have discussed that in detail. And less incidence in older children. If you don't have an atopic dermatitis history under the age of five, it is less possible. The possibilities are very meager to have an incident in the later age. And starts commonly as a mandala, mandala kushta, having a red or black discoloration and late having a spreading nature Though it is not contagious, it's having a spreading nature on the baby itself, but limited to certain areas like face, scalp, elbows, and legs. That is a classical narration of Charmadala. And the Vyanti Kadagas, which we are going to discuss is And Vyadi Kadagas, which we are going to discuss or we are going to consider is this, that Sahaja Vada Pradilomada Indithvakhdadu. 
that you shut off the tokis the and vada pradilomada is also found elsewhere in the body like upper respiratory infections allergic rhinitis uh, allo uh, atopic triad like bronchial asthma vada pradilomada is not only limiting to the skin it is found in other parts of the body as well so uh, this atopic dermatitis and all the atopic triads management comes in one shell because it's not ad atopic dermatitis cannot be say, uh, like uh, segregated and managed as separately we should consider the full body as well so the vada pradiloma da in the full body should be taken into account and naturally the acne mandya is a precipitating cause over the for the shwasa it is well known and also for the rasa dhadu also the acne mandya plays a major role and um for like presence of arm part and that uh, arm of why in the rasa and recta is also present in in the in this case case scenario of uh, atopic dermatitis and the dosha koba can be decided upon the uh, stage when the patient is coming to you so uh, dosha koba we can't generally we can't generalize every time i told that vada pradilomada is the but in the acute stages of skin eruptive skin lesions there will be pitta dominant kapha pitta dominance will be the but in the normal rukshatva then vada dominance will be the and naturally uh, rasa rakta ta srodo dushti and thadu dushti will be the and ojas is also involved because the rasa thadu is having a link with the direct link with the ojas as well and i have kept certain uh, certain studies to highlight the in, uh, involvement of acne mandya diet and everything in atopic dermatitis because uh, usually in contemporary medicine when the baby go for an allopathic physician they usually i have seen it many one commenting that uh, no relation with the food you have to stick on to this medicines alone and apply a moisturizer on the skin no no restrictions in the skin uh, no restrictions in the food Uh, it is a beautiful concept of ayurveda uh, linking that uh, food is having a direct role in that uh, and uh, so direct role in that uh, uh, digestion metabolism and skin is actually a reflection of that acne mandya or the directly uh, this koshtakada ama is directly reflecting on the rasa and rasa thadu and skin lexi rasa twak and lexi ga are actually a, um, uh, one and same or uh, three faces of the same thing rasa twak and lexi ga the three faces of the same thing so uh, this rasa is directly getting affected going to affect with the koshtaka dama so everything uh, the any any diet which are going to consume is having a reflection in the twak so a beautiful skin is actually a reflection of a beautiful healthy gut so uh, uh, if you go on searching you can find n number of studies detailing that gut uh, role of gut microbiome in, uh, in regulating the gut skin axis the skin axis goals like gut skin axis mm, uh, just to and uh, role of gut microbiome in shaping the skin and everything and uh, uh, it is wonderful to see that the gut microbiome is that uh, quality of that microbiome in the gut is uh, actually decided by uh, the breastfeeding that way of delivery that breastfeeding the quality of breast milk not exactly the quantity how healthy your breast milk was that is more important so shuddha stanya and everything it is uh, shuddha stanya is going to regulate or uh, build up a healthy gut microbiome in the child itself so stanya doshas are given much importance on our classics so also that sudhiga paricharya is given much importance actually that shuddha stanya is going to shape the quality of gut microbiome throughout your life so that shuddha stanya if it's ashuddha it is going to disrupt the gut microbiome as well 
that is why i went on narrating that uh, early uh, stoppage of breastfeeding in especially in working parentage uh, the babies of such parents are more prone to develop allergic allergic triad all allergic uh, rhinitis asthma and this dermatitis because the gut get habituated with unhealthy bacteria like e coli clostridium and everything and the health then uh, the proportion of healthy bacteria is reduced in the it's not that our gut is uh, uh, habituated by healthy bacteria alone but it should be like that the percentage of healthy bacteria should be much more than the unhealthy bacteria so it is decided by the quality of diet which you are having which the baby is uh, the type of weaning and uh, the healthy weaning schedules that leku uh, ahara usually the baby is the atopic uh, baby is having atopic triad uh, will be having much uh, sensitivity to you know, milk protein milk protein is going to trigger usually that digestion uh, with protein will be highly defective and uh, they will be having much sensitivity sensitivity to milk protein as the babies are habituated to milk very much in the early stages so uh, so naturally that acne mandya happens with every milk conception so it goes on triggering the pathology so again that gut microbiome becomes in disrupted to that i am not going into details of gut microbiome because my intention is uh, to in a detail that uh, ayurvedic principles treatment principles any discussions in this field is uh, highly welcome so we are speaking about the vyadhi kadagas and the management strategy is like vad prelo vad pradalomada in the tok akni mandya ama in the koshta as well as dadu and rasa and rakta dadu is involved with uh, consequent ojonasha as well so the management strategy will be uh, now we are going into that exact scenario uh, management strategy will be first ama pajana first to uh, i will stress once more it's not the dosha shamanata in the first stage so first stage is exclusively dedicated for ama pajana irrespective of the dosha we go for ama pajana in the initial stage without addressing the ama twa we if we go for dosha shamana you are going to face a trigger in the skin manifestation it's usually seen that when we give a kashaya or when we give a churna or something that skin lesion usually i find that hmm, uh, skin lesions will the uh, oozing of the skin lesion won't increase or the fever will increase but why because we aimed at the dosha shamana first and not for the ama pajana so the mandatory first and foremost rule is that uh, when we you get an oozy skin lesion go for the ama pajana first that is concentrate on the ama pajana then after subsiding the tama then if it's a prabhuda dosha you can go for a shodana therapy or otherwise you can go for a uh, shamana therapy then after that uh, deepanam uh, shodhanam if needed and then go for shamana and external application and then for the rasayan i think i can detail it with the help of certain case studies now i kept a snaps of certain pics uh, skin lesions uh, so as to help you that uh, to decide which dosha is dominant in skin lesions i think um, i'll narrate two or three first and then if you can try and do it it will be high, highly helpful so this baby is uh, having an erythematous base a reddish skin lesion so the dominant dosha is pitta but uh, a bit of in when the lesion becomes bit raised the involvement of kaba should be ulsanna dosha or ulsanna twak is an indication of kaba involvement so this is mostly uh, kaba pitta skin lesion the second one this one see the dryness is very marked in the flexor aspects the dryness is very marked baby is having severe itching and due to that itching it has become erythematous over that 
otherwise if left undisturbed it won't be arithmetic it will be like this so it is dominant dosha is vada uh, here mm, one thing more to explain that itching when the baby is complaining of itching uh, it can happen due to vada and kapha as well the dry skin can cause itching and that itching is solely attributed to vata dosha alone and the kabaja itching is bit different and uh, dryness won't be associated with kabaja itch so this is uh, vata dominant skin lesion this again this see the typical atopic skin over that no rithima nothing is that baby is not having any complaint now but uh, she used to have the exacerbations very often this is the relapsing phase and it's you see that typical vada vada uh, dominant skin lesion over that again see this skin lesion is having which do, can you help me to assess the dosha you can uh, either type in the chat box or just switch on your mic and say dryness is the erythema is the so which dosha dominant shall we try together vata vata pitta yeah yeah surely that erythema is the so uh, dryness is the so it is uh, vata paitika clear clear perfect next one this one can you try erythema is the that bit elevated skin lesion is the so which dosha perfect pitta kapha pitta kapha is the perfect perfect highly interactive smart audience this one extreme dryness is the baby is having itching perfect perfect the chavada chavada vada is the chavarna varna vada is a perfect vadika dosha this one complete reddish discoloration of the bay, of the body it's like a rithima full around the body and you can see the dry skin yeah perfectly vada paitika vada paitika and the dryness as you can see the extreme dryness in the sole as well next one try this try for this it is a bit elevated baby is having itching pitta involvement is not there there is no erythema no oozing no fever no systemic mem when there is pitta involvement using usually systemic manifestations will be the erythema will be the burning sensation oozing will be the foul smell will be the baby will be having fever or systemic manifestation like uh, uh, diarrhea or something will be the hmm, usually uh, pitta pitta skin lesions are highly fulminant type it's an acute manifestation and uh, they will be immediately seeking a medical attention and the other type uh, kabaja is slowly progressing and vadika skin lesion usually they will be complaining of the baby is having dry skin that's all dryness and itching only will be the only complaint and you can't find any erythema there is only that the baby will go on scratching and making that skin irritable and causing an erythema otherwise the skin lesion won't be having an erythematous space this one is like perfectly it is kabavadika kabavadika lesion i think you have come to that point now this one this one dryness is the vada is dominant but bit kabaja involvement is also there 
Radha is dominant for sure. This one. That earthy matter's base is there perfectly. Pitta is the pitta is the and bit of rukshatwak is there because it's a case of atopic dermatitis. So pitta is the dominant dosha, even though the underlying vada involvement is there. Again, here that earthy matter's base again pointing about the pitta involvement. Here, dryness and the earthima. Ivada Vita involvement. Now I am happy, so happy that you are coming to that point. And you can see the difference between these two slides. Another thing I point to. Yes, I'm happy I'm skipping that slides and going to the exact presentation. Now Extremely thankful for the audience because uh, you are very, uh, very sharp in diagnosing. So coming to the management. So whenever a case of atopic dermatitis is coming to you, uh, first see the whether which is there is one first question is whether Amakwa signs are there or not. You can see the uh, like uh, Amakwa like or a slimy snithada in that. You can see that uh, here, even though the dosha is uh, pitta, pitta uh, that uh, erythematous base, everything that foul smelling uh, lesion is the purulent, blood stained, yellow colored, foul smelling pus is the. It is far spreading with systemic manifestations like fever, lymphadenitis, everything heartburn, everything. It's a it's a perfectly pitta dominant skin lesion, but. You can see that that uh, in the initial stage, even though you are not thorough with that, whether there is amatwa is there or not, for the beginners, it will be tough to decide whether there is ama involvement will be there or not. But make sure that make uh, like you should start like there is it's an ama vasta because it's very acute and everything. Start with that ama shamana drug first. Don't go for a directly with the shamana drug. That's my first message, take home message. First take home message. So for this lesion, for this skin lesion also, that erythematous uh, pythica skin lesion there, the slimy look, that Amato Lakshana, you can actually uh, you can see and just recognize that amato election but for the beginner i don't uh, i won't insist that you can identify that amato with that first vision itself so hmm, for the first prescription it should be if the skin lesion is pythiga and acute fulminant like that the first prescription should be pythiga ama shamana chilsa so it go, should go like this condition is pitta plus ama Plus increased kleda is also there. So three factors I have identified from that. Pitta is dominant. Amatwa is there. And increased kleda twa or that snikta that you can see over, see over that. So do amapajana. How will you do amapajana? When there is ama pitta, you cannot go for tikshna drugs. It should be pitta shamana and also amapajana. The best thing you can go for pitta shamana and amapajana is, can someone help me? Pitta Shamana, Paitika Ama Shamana, yeah, Tikta Dravya is the any single drug which will be helpful. Amardotaran Kashayam, perfect. Mahadiktagam is bit uh, Rasayana property. Guluchi, Guluchi, it came. Perfect. Guluchi, it came. Guluchi is the best single drug which can do, which is Tikta Rasa Ama Pajana drug. The perfect drug of choice uh, in the pythica skin lesion in the initial stages. Just see a smoothing skin lesion, acute baby is having fever. The first medicine you should try should be guluchi. It should be a guluchi churna or a uh, drug, uh, a kashaya having a guluchi in that. Can be guluchi adhikata as well. 
or Pajanamrata Kashaya, which is familiar for the Macaralites, I think, or start with the Guluchi Churna. And as I uh, told you that these Paitika spinations are very fulminant. So if you go on managing the lesion with herbal drugs alone, maybe it won't come to your control. So it is better to start and RSA drugs along with that. Like uh, Pravala Basma is very good in managing uh, these Paitika skin lesions, even in the Amavasta. Or Chandra Prabha Guliga will also help that. Or you can go for uh, Rasa Sindura also in bit elder children, very young children. I don't give Rasa Sindura in the initial phase. But Pravala Basma is a very safe drug you can give in the initial phase as well. So uh, the first drug you should write is Guluchi Churna or any Kashaya having Guluchi in that. And for in here, Shadanga Kashaya is my favorite, that Nishundi Shadanga. And that Shundi should be avoided from that Shadanga combination. And I usually give it for the initial stage or Guluchi Sattva uh, along with that Guluchi Sattva is perfect. And a bit of Pravala Basma twice beauty. When the skin surface is interrupted and the baby is having oozing, never give an external uh, application with medicated paste. That labana should be avoided because it is going to like, uh, it will like form a coating above that pus and everything and uh, sec chance of secondary infection is triggered with that. So never go for external uh, medicated paste during that oozing phase and it's better and it's not better. It should be advised, it, uh, advised that you should have a shalana every time. So uh, if you advise shalana, like uh, the uh, time of contact between the kashaya and the skin will be very limited. So to increase the time of contact between the kashaya and the skin, I do usually use wet compresses. Uh, like a three or four uh, fold of uh, cloth is applied on that uh, oozy skin lesion. And I do wet that, uh, I do make that uh, cloth wet with this uh, kashaya. So for that, I usually, my first choice is Karaskaram kashaya, which is very highly sure drug of choice in that. Highly effective, but it's not readily available in the market. Or Nalpamara kashaya is also, and the HT kashaya. Uh, water boiled with HT is also very perfect in Paitika skin lesions so during the Amavasta. Don't apply external medicated base. So our prescription was like uh, Pajanamrutan Gashaya or uh, Shadanga Gashaya without Shundi. Uh, Guluchi Churnam or Sudarshanam tablet, I think it's familiar, very familiar to everyone. It's my drug of choice over the couple with Pravala Blasma or Chang Chandra Prabha as well. And do a wet compress with Taraskara or Nalpamara or HD Kashaya. Hope it is clear. So the next stage will be like that slimy amatwa oozing everything has vanished. The baby will be coming in then after two days of OP that uh, oozing has come down madam but still that rhythma is there. This will be the so the amatwa you had managed with that above prescription. Now the condition is like Pitta is aggravated with clearizer, but not that much in that yeah, earlier stage. So with uh, Pitta and Alpha clearizer, that is erythematous base is the surrounding edema has reduced, oozing has reduced, foul smell has also reduced. So naturally that acute stages of fever has come down, but still the baby is having fever. Mild fever is that minimal lymphadenitis is also there. So, uh, so you have to write the prescription for uh, initial amabajana for maximum three or four days. That is enough. It will come down with that. And uh, this is see the uh, last photograph of the second stage after second two days uh, in the uh, two days amabajana. Now you have to dec decide whether it is prepuda dosha or not because amavasta has come down and this acute fever has also come down. If that full body is involved, Prabhuta Doshatva is the better to eliminate that dosha. Give, give a kashaya or any drug having a bit of rejana property. Don't go for the shamana. Don't cal directly target at the shamana because it is it will be tough for you to give control this much Prabhuta Dosha with shamana drug. So 
uh, if more body parts are involved prabhuda doshatva is the go for a kashaya or any preparation having a shodana property so this is a phase 2 so avipatti churna or avipatti kara churna i think you will be familiar with you can go for that or kaduku rohini is the drug of choice here any kashaya or anything having kaduku rohini will be highly appreciable in this condition or kirada dikta is also very drug of choice very good drug, drug of choice here yeah? so any kashaya or preparation having kirada dikta will be kirada dikta is highly ruksha shida shobahara rakta pitahara and everything so it will be best drug of choice here yeah? or uh, you can go for uh you can go for karaskara patra is very nice karaskara tok is also uh, nice but patra i think it's easily available i do have the patra and have it shalana and you can do amapajana with uh, if the recurrence rate is much more every time if you need much more amapajana than the initial 3 4 days you can go for amapajana with kalingam padavalasya patra makadigu rohini because uh, i have to encounter many many cases with atopic dermatitis with high recurrence rate so this guluchi amapajana won't be enough in the initial stage so i do uh, continue the amapajana in the second stage also with uh, a bit more deeper thadus this kalingam padolasya patram kadigiropini is narrated in uh, um, like vishama jwara adhigarana sandada sadada anye dyu jwara it is narrated over the when this amatwa get deep seated in the rasa dadu and rakta dadu we have to re, if we have to remove that amatwa uh, this guluchi or sudarshana churna won't be enough so we have to continue a deeper amapajana and then continue for the pitta samana shodana so i go on uh, advising this uh, not twice daily it, uh, i do advise this kashaya in the night time and go for a shodana kashaya and the other day so Uh, i think makki puvadi kashaya is uh, i think airlines will be familiar with that it's not readily available in the market but it's a wonderful drug when the systemic manifestations are higher in inflammatory phase of um, the atopic dermatitis with uh, fever uh, this git manifestations like diarrhea everything oozy skin lesions and a bit of respiratory when this triad that respiratory git and skin lesion this triad get in plain get affected this makki puvadi kashaya is a very good drug of choice it's not readily available in the market so again going to shamana drugs uh, moolakadi kashaya available in the market is highly advised here or guluchadi kashaya or panchadiktaka kashaya is highly pitta shamana is advised in this stage of second stage after completing that amapajana or tiktaga kashaya is or padugira padola kadugirohani adi kashaya everything is advised highly advised in the second stage after doing that amapajana uh, and internal medicine can uh, i can accompany gobi chandana adi guliga is highly effect highly effective in management at this stage after completion of amapajana and you can couple with dushi bishari guliga as because this arm concept of arm avishya should uh, be it should bear in mind because this uh, amatwa is going to uh, trigger that dushi avishya activity so dushi i usually accompany uh, uh, add on this dushi avishya tablet along with that and now at this stage uh, you can after the completion of wet compresses now using a stop you can go for external medical applications like pitta shamana shida lepana can be advised here uh, ht lepana or jadamaya di lepana is my favorite or ellu nishadi leva or just krishna tilam cooked in uh, milk and ex- applied uh, externally also i prefer now this phase has appeared that is uh, oozing has vanished that ertima has bit come down now the dryness is setting this now it is like vada paithiga condition see the dryness setting it so this is the third phase so first phase was prabhuda pitta pitama and kleda second phase was kleyama and kleda subsided then it was prabhuda pitta alone 
then pitta has subsided now the underlying vata dry skin is coming up so pitta vata condition is a third phase so when the pitta comes down again the dryness is going to precipitate so this stage when the dryness is appearing uh, without any using now no systemic manifestations like fever anything is the now this is the site for this is the exact point which you should introduce nehana both internally and externally so internally my drug of choice is always tiktaka krita or karaskara krita is also very nice because uh, it is having a bit more deeper action which is indicated in vata rakta spectrum as well uh, it is much more effective than tiktaka but the palatability is bit less and external application also snehana apply can be applied with shadadauda krita is the best drug of choice with a bit of eshada basma will do wonders because eshada basma is uh, actually a very nice skin moisturizer the dryness will uh, will be well managed with eshada basma so shadadauda krita mixed with eshada basma is very nice and you can use durva krita as well and in traditional kerala prescription we as chambarathyadi or dinesha valliyadi at this moment and as this uh, atopic dermatitis is going to have exacerbations so we manage the this is much deep seatedly if this uh, if the recurrence rate is very much so we go on doing shiradhara for this uh, managing that dry uh, vada paitiga condition with tiktaka uh, gana or aragoda tiktaka gana as well and takradhara is done uh, to manage that brain itch and skin also ma uh, aragoda mahadiktaka gana is used for doing the takradhara and shiroleva is also done for managing that uh, stress factor over that alpa satuda is going to trigger actually the stress is actually why we get stressed because my satva bala is less na so the alpa satuda is always managed with the uh, shiroleva over the and shirakrita uh, vasti does wonders in the management of atopic dermatitis now going to rasayana rasayana i prefer with mahadikta krita that's why i told don't introduce mahadikta ga in the initial phases dikta ga is having much rodoshodana pitta shamana property and mahadikta ga is having a rasayana property brahmana rasayana property so uh, introduce the mahadikta ga rasayana uh, mahadikta krita only when it is indicated for rasayana that is after that uh, the kosta shodana after that dosha shamana you can attain you can introduce for rasayana and vrsha krita actually to narrated in the context of rakta pitta is having a very nice action over here and rajanya the churna uh, is very nice for controlling that gut microbiome and gut integrity in uh, paitiga skin lesion babies so it is advised to have rajanya the at least once a day for correcting the acne deepana and pajana then and there itself ashwagandha churna is effective in uh, in cases where stress is the main triggering factor haridra kanda works uh, wonderfully in allergic atopic triads so haridra kanda again pitta shamana and managing that uh, allergic triad also again uh, do a shiro apthinga with the pitta shamana kleda hara drug like balahadadi kera or chandanadi kera for managing for preventing the exacerbation of excess pitta and for sure diet regulations meditation yoga is going to help the baby because stress management uh, pranayama everything is going to help the baby diet regulation is uh, more uh, more of vegetable diet advise uh, reducing the excess amount of uh, uh, heavy proteins that is the management protocol oc type of skin lesion in atopic dermatitis uh, now coming to the next stage next type uh, so dr jasul how much time remaining or oh, is it i am now it is 7:30 7:40 i think 7:35 how many minutes more i can take ma'am you can go on ma'am that's okay is it okay yes ma'am so hmm, coming to the next type 
So we have completed that UC management of UC skin lesion. I uh, will summarize it once more. That the UC skin lesion, we went on managing the Dharmavastha first. That is managing with Sudarshana Churna, Guluchi, uh, then Pravala Pasma, wet compressors and everything. Then after managing that Pravala Pasma, uh, sorry, uh, Ama Vasta, we get go for went for managing that Prabhuda Pitta Vasta. That is with Pitta Shamana Kashayas like Pancha Tiktaga and all, uh, Tiktaga and Kashayam and all. We went on managing with uh, uh, Kadugurohani or Prabhuda Dosha. We went for Shodhana, everything. Then came to, uh, after subs and external applications like Elden Nishadi. Then our Krishna Dila, everything was good. And after that, we came for uh, Vata Paitiga condition and we uh, gave Krita for that, Snehana internally and externally for that. And we gave, later in the fourth phase, we gave Rasayana. That is Mahatiktaga was the best drug of choice over that. And we, when the baby is having ex, uh, relapse and exacerbations very common, we went for Shiradara, Shirakrita Vasti, uh, uh, Shirolepa and all. Uh, that was the management pro protocol of OC skin lesion. With Pitta predominant OC skin lesion. Now the second, another scenario, another scenario, another baby. Uh, is having a much more elder baby or another baby is coming with an oozy skin lesion, but it's not pitta dominant, it's bit kappa dominant. See this type of skin lesion? It is oozy, thick. No, the other one was foul smelling, oozy, can even that earthy matters base, everything was there. But now see the difference in the oozing, oozing skin lesion? It is thick, purulent. Oozy skin lesion. Uh, you can see that a more white colored secretion is the thick edematous, shiny skin is the, the pitta involvement is perfectly not there. Erythema is comparatively very less, uh, less. It's slowly spreading. Baby is saying that, or mama is saying that she is having that skin lesion in the left for two or three weeks. It is almost similar, slowly spreading it is, but not a fulminant condition. Pitta is not the slow spreading. It's not that foul smelling as before. Severe itching is the. She can't control that itching. And heaviness is the. She feel like the leg is heavy. Malaise, aknimandiam, itchy throat, everything is the. See, another age. This, is the, this one was a bit uh, elder girl. And this one, a younger child. This one. Can, I think you can see it. See? You can't see that erythema over there. Is it clear? Itchy skin is the, it's a bit ulsanna twak is the kaba dominant. Second phase, see? See, second phase after management. Third visit. See, third visit. This is the fourth visit. Perfect skin. Fourth visit. This scenario we'll be discussing. Oozing, oozing was the, but not that foul smelling or purulent. So, uh, this is bit kappa dominant type with no pitta involvement over the. Amatwa is there and Kleda is there in the initial phase. So, uh, Ama Shamana should be the um, Ama Shamana and Clay the Kabahara should be the so uh, Kaba, Kabahara and Ama, Ama Shamana when coupled that Kaba, Kaba and Ama when coupled the drug of choice for Ama Shamana is perfect one is Shaddar don't give the Shaddar nam in Paitiga dominant condition Kaba and Ama comes together Shaddarana is the best drug of choice. You can add our Vetumar and Guliga of our the and Vilvadi Guliga is also um, uh, very nice because uh, Thadugada Amatwa concept is the when uh, this Amavisha is there in Pitta dominant conditions we went for uh, Dushi Vishari Guliga. See here we are not adopting Dushi Vishari Guliga. When here in Kaba is a community we are going for Vilvadi Guliga. That's the difference. When Pitta Shamana, Ama Visha, and that is Dushi Vishari, and Kaba Shamana, Ama Visha, it is Vilvar. 
usually this kaba, kaba dominant conditions like oocyst skin lesions will be always accompanied with upper respiratory man involvement as well. Or it will be showing a like CISO relation with that bronchial asthma and everything. So you should manage the respiratory infections as well. So here we are, Kriyadi Kashai is the best drug of choice over there because it helps in managing the Vyakri, helps in managing that upper respiratory as well. So it's the best drug of choice. Anilomana should be and manage the so Padola Muladi Kashaya can be given in elder children or Trayindyadi also in elder children, but uh, for younger ones, go for Vyakriyadi Kashaya or Shaddarna. Vetamar and Guliga is indicated in this type of skin lesion alone. Don't give Vetamar and Guliga in the Paitika dominant condition. It may trigger the condition. Mm, or uh, in very small children, Padadi Kashaya, uh, Kashaya will do wonders. And for this skin lesion, when the oozing is there, don't give external uh, medicated paste, like don't give external lepana. Do shalana with tripala kashaya. Tripala is kabagara, tuksha, and vranashodana. Do, uh, do uh, wet compress with tripala kashaya here, not in paitika skin lesions. Paitika skin lesion, we uh, selected nalpamaradi kashaya or eshti kashaya and taraskara kashaya. Da. Here, tripala kashaya will be that. Tripala kshalana or tripala wet compress will be nice. No. Now, after managing that skin lesion, now that oozing has subsided, and now it is not uh, first initial stage was kaba kleda vitama. So, amatohara has subsided with uh, three or four days, and may take uh, like one week or so because kaba is a bit more deep seated. So uh, it's better to advise a drug, Amashamana drug for one week. So this next visit. So it's Nirama Avastha with no oozing, but you can see the kapha dominant condition. Kleda is not that much vanished. So again, continue with uh, a bit more Shodhana drug like uh, uh, Padola Muladi or Padola Kadgarohaniyadi can do. Now here you can introduce Gukulu Kalpana. It is the point here which you should introduce Gugulu. It's not advised to introduce Gugulu Kalpanas in Paititta dominant the other scenario. Uh, Gugulu may trigger that uh, inflammatory mechanism in Pitta dominant condition. It's here you should advise Gugulu. Uh, so Kaishara Gugulu is the best drug of choice here. Arapan Kashayam is a Kerala traditional yoga. Uh, Nurgundiyadi Kashayam or Nurgundiyadi Guliga will do wonders here because creamy chilsa is going to help you here. With Kaba and uh, this combination of Kaba and Kleda is very similar to the condition of creamy over that. And so Nurgundiyadi Kashaya is going to help you. And you can introduce Arishta Asava Kalpana or Arishta Asava Kalpanas will be much more better than the Kashaya Kalpanas here. So, Mulaka Asava or Khadira Kanala, uh, Khadira Arishta can help you. Don't introduce Arishta Asava Kalpana in the earlier Pitta dominant stage. Here, Arishta Asava Kalpana uh, should be used in Kapa dominant stage as well, especially in kids. Mulaka Asava and uh, Khadira Arishta will help you here. And uh, again, now the skin integrity is a bit more better. Now the itching will be the oozing won't be the but the baby will be having severe itching. So Nimba Patradi Churna is the best drug of choice here. Nimba Patradi Churna it contains Nimba Patram, Shodhida, Ganda Gum and Daru Haridra as well. So uh, make uh, external application of Nimba Patradi Churna uh, in plain water it is okay uh, or if it is increased kaba you can make that paste with Takra as well. Or you can use Eladi Gana Churna in Takra and for Shodhana, you can use Mani Badra Lehi as well. Hope it is clear. Am I rushing? So this is again the stage where uh, Kaba is the itching is the now the dryness has started to set in. Kaba is the itching is the but dryness started to set in. So uh, now they had uh, uh, third stage of Kaba 
Vadika condition with teaching still persisting, uh, but Kleda Bhava has vanished. Typically, the Kleda Bhava has vanished and slowly dryness is setting in. So, you can uh, introduce when it's Kanira Ame, Sleshmani, Lishine, when Vada is dominant, introduce a Snehakya, both internally and externally. And uh, Kabasa, Kalyarna and Kashayam will do wonders here. Or Aragoda Mahatiktagam Kradam will do will help you a lot here. Because Aragoda Kashaya and Mahatiktaga drug will help you a lot. And it's a point we should introduce Madhusnuki also. Madhusnuki Rasayana will help in controlling that infection and itching a lot. So must my drug of choice is Aragoda Mahatikta Krada with coupled with Madhusnuki Rasayana in this stage. And external applications like Gulu Marichati in intense kapha dominant conditions uh, or uh, Eladi Keram usually or Ashtapatradi Ketailam external application can help to control the itching very nicely at this phase. Otherwise, if the baby go on it, uh, complaining itching with the Kleda Vasta, don't go for Thaila application. Make sure that you are introducing the Thaila when the dry Kleda has vanished and the dryness is setting in. And now at this condition of Kaba dominant, uh, Vata Kaba dominant stage, you can go for Rasayana. Pilya Madhusnuki Rasayana uh, is advised here. It contains Gandaka. So it can be very effective in controlling the itching as well. Uh, make sure that the baby is having Akni Deepti. So every time coupled with Tashta Churna uh, or Vidanga Rajinya the Churna is also nice. I usually couple and uh, Shwasa Kasahara, Agastya Rasayana every time when there is a Kabaja skin lesion. Otherwise, if you go on treating the Kabaja skin lesion without addressing that uh, respiratory, that uh, bronchial asthma will set in very soon. So I usually uh, uh, couple Agastya Rasayana or a Shwasa Kasahara drug every time with that so that that exacerbation of uh, respiratory allergy won't be there. So I think we have covered the second scenario of Kabaja Visarpa. Uh, I'll summarize it once more. I'll just brush it up. So this is Kabaja Visarpa mm, with Kapa and Ama and Kleda was the, it was oozing. No fever is nothing, signs were the. So we went for a bit Shodhana and we were afraid of the respiratory trigger. So Vyakriyadika Shaya, Padola Muladika Shaya was the Kapapitaharam Shodhanam we gave. We gave Dhamma Pajanam is Shaddarana. We introduced Vettumar and Guliga the, and Bilwadi Guliga was introduced. We did a wet compress with Tripaladika Shaya. Then the Kleda vanished. Uh, Kleda, sorry, so the Amma, Amma, Amato has vanished early in a Kava and Kleda was the so we tried to introduce Gugulu Kalpana, especially Kaishora Gugulu over there. And we went for introducing the Darishta Asava Kalpanas like Moolaga Asava and Kadarajta here. And at this stage, we started external application with Nimbavatra Adi Churnam or Ela Adi Gana Churnam here so that to manage that increased teaching. Slowly that kaba has come down and dryness has set in. So at this stage of dryness, we try to introduce a snehana over there. And snehana was introduced internally and externally. Internally, we uh, thought of selecting Aragada Mahatiktagam and Madhusnihi over there. And externally, we went for Eladikeram, Gulu Marijadi and all. Now, after that uh, stage, we went for Rasayana. Rasayana, William Madhusnihi was our... Uh, drug of choice and we uh, went for addressing that Ashta Churna for obtaining that Akni Deepana and again went for adding that Agastya Rasayana uh, for, for anticipation of a respiratory setback. That is how we manage the Kapaja type. Now coming to the more simpler one that is Vardhika skin lesion, Vardhika Visarpa. That is a relapsing phase of atopic dermatitis. Uh, the resting skin will be Vardhika type. But uh, make sure that sorry for the disturbance. Uh, like Avadika, Avadika Visapa. Here hmm, we will think that it's very easy to manage this dry skin, but 
Now you should know that this dry skin is a tip of an iceberg. It's underlying Sanyapadika Dosha Dushti underneath. So if we directly go on introducing Brahmana Tailas like Danuan Tarangar Pasasti or something like that, it is going to have a flare up. So even though it feels like a, uh, like a pavam dry skin, uh, make sure that you are managing the other associated doshas as well. So make sure that you are giving it Deepana, Akni Deepana, Ashtachurna or something. Or Hingo Ajadi is extremely nice in these conditions. Then go for a Srodo Shodhana Krita like Kalyanaga or Panjagavya Krita internally. And then externally with Shastika Thaila or Nalpamaradi Koyambo will do. But just application of external thailas will is go, not going to manage that dryness over the internal acne deepana, then internal uh, snehana coupled with external snehana will do, uh, pro, will give promising results. Uh, this is not atopic dermatitis, this ichthyosis. See the before and after picture. He was uh, having very difficult even to, to smile. It was cracking over the, uh, this is the before picture. And see, this is the after picture. This is the before one. And this is the uh, after treatment one. We did Mustadi Rajay Avana Vasti and This is that uh, picture of that Kabaja stimulation we managed in three phases. Then this is the managed uh, after treatment. And this is another case of uh, atopic dermatitis having involvement of ear as well. This is before treatment in this after treatment. And this is again before and after treatment. Just to summarize that, uh, take home message should be like, uh, if you are identifying a skin lesion may, before starting for the prescription, I usually feel that I give an initial assessment Evaluate it with a scorat sheet, uh, assess the severity of that, then uh, go for analyzing that uh, uh, triggering factors, identify the triggering factors, which all are you going to trigger the situation, identify it out, uh, segregate that, uh, advise the baby to uh, be on strict pathya. Then, uh, then third is only the management strategy. An agent strategy is like assessment of uh, ama, uh, whether ama is involved, then with this, which is the underlying dosha, if it's pitta dominant uzi, kaba dominant uzi, or vadiga condition, and then manage accordingly. I think um, it was a bit, uh, I was thrashing through the slides. Uh, anyway, uh, any clarification, suggestions, or anything, it's highly welcome. And as I said at the outset, uh, I was targeting the beginner uh, practitioners in this scenario. I know that a lot many prescriptions, a lot many variations for the uh, common rule is the uh, veterans, please excuse. You can contribute to the session with your valuable suggestions. It's always welcome. And I'm again, once again, thanking you, the organizers, for inviting to me this uh, session. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for a very inspiring and informative session. Also for detailed elaborating your clinical experiences to us. Thank you very much. Before moving on to the discussion, I would like to invite Dr. Mohammad Yasin, factory in charge, Dr. P. Alikuti's Cortical Ayurveda Pharmacy, Cortical, sir, to speak a few words. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir, you are audible. Audible, okay. okay. Um, myself, Dr. Mohammed Yasin, on behalf of Dr. P. Ali Putis Kotakil Ayurveda Pharmacy. I need I need a couple of I need a couple of minutes to introduce our organization, our Ayurveda manufacturing unit and our product. Initially I used the, uh, this dance to Thanks, uh, uh, ma'am, ma uh, to give a valuable, uh, to giving a valuable knowledge, uh, sharing a valuable knowledge for us. Uh, for Ayurveda community, for Ayurveda doctors like us, 
we need this uh, this like um, more valuable practical exposure uh, for uh, for getting better result in our patients and better space in our patients and uh, and again and i want to go through my, our uh, production unit we already manufacturing all major ayurvedic classical ayurvedic uh, products as well as proprietary medicine around 25 products now in market our proprietary products uh, our uh, our product ranges i already shared all the doctors for your concern for valuable uh for your valuable patient for day to day uh, your practice life and also we have uh, panjagarma associate ex- uh, equipments like uh vasti syringe sneha vasti syringe kashaya vasti syringe as well as we have uh, a food and nutraceutical division also so uh, kindly contact with our uh, website and our uh, personal number to getting the details and all and i also i will give you all uh, de- uh, details regarding this to your uh, your contact number so thank you thank you for all okay. thank you very much sir ma'am shall we move on to the discussion sure yeah ma'am there are some questions in the chat box i request all the participants to post your questions in the chat box so either you can unmute yourself and ask the question directly ma'am uh, one of the question is can you please explain the dose of padula padola kadurohanyadi kashaya uh, padola kadurohanyadi kashayam uh, for uh, one more thing to give is that uh, in managing the skin lesion it's better to avoid all preserved bottled kashayas because uh, that preservative is going to trigger that Hmm, uh, skin manifestation so whenever you are pre- advising kashaya to a skin lesion baby having a skin lesion especially babies it's better to avoid all bottled kashayas and it's better to give uh, a ro- a le- like a prescription for the raw medicine or you can have uh, like kashaya churna and then prepare uh, advise them to prepare the kashaya and that's the first point and the second one is the dose of padola kadugurohaniyadi kashaya padola kadugurohaniyadi is uh, comparatively having a kava uh, pitta shamana or pitta kapa shamana property and a mild shodhana is a uh, mild anilomana is expected out of that so if you are giving the kashaya in babies younger than 2 years it's like uh, 5 to 10 ml is much more in uh, is very nice uh, very good enough but every time when you fix the dose it's every time it's individual variations are there now our drug dose is never calculated upon the age or weight of the baby it is always calculated upon the level of dosha and the acne of the baby so if i tell that it is 10 ml it's not hard and fast 10 ml for each and every baby if it's 2 years we can start it like 10 ml and slowly One, with one or two days you will know that whether what the dose the baby requests that is the actual dose uh, depending upon the takni bala and level of dosha that is how we decide usually it's somewhere around 10 ml 10 to 15 ml for 2 years thank you ma'am and the next question is what to do if one month baby's navel is protruded outward i don't know i didn't hear it what to do if one month old baby's navel is protruded outward that is oophalitis i think it's a different concern uh, it's not related to this topic uh, protruded outside means it is uh, oophalitis with inflammatory uh, uh, umbilical infections or just protruding like umbilical hernia it's not clear umbilical hernia management is a different protocol and oophalitis with which is very common uh, is having a pitta kapha shamana protocol okay that is clearing uh, it with pitta kapha shamana kshanana dravyas and dusting with sudarshana churna is best in oophalitis and whether in uh, by in umbilical hernia like manifestation which i think uh, uh, she is that questioner is asking the management of umbilical hernia 
it is like a strengthening of the rectal muscles and usually the umbilical hernia gets managed after the baby start crawling and the abdomen muscle gets strengthened it managed get, get managed by its own and make sure that baby is not having constipation or vada pradilom okay yes ma'am thank you ma'am ma'am which book can be referred for different skin disease treatments <laughs> That's it. Uh, if it's from a Keralite, I will tell that Arugya Kalpadrima is the best drug, best, uh, it's a, uh, like encyclopedia of managing dermatological condition. Uh, like otherwise, uh, uh, plain Visarpa Chikilsa, like Vada Pitta Kapa Shamana Visarpa Chikilsa can do. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, any experience of using Jaluka? Yeah, sure, sure. I do use. I do use Jaluka in uh, Pitta dominant skin lesion. Uh, it's a nice question because I forgot to add uh, on the in, in, uh, like use of Jaluka. Uh, when it's localized uh, Pythika dominant skin lesion and the baby is uh, not cooperative with the Tikta Kashaya and everything, I do use Jaluka because uh, Jaluka is wonderful. It has a wonderful action in removing that inflammatory uh, biomarkers from the site, localized site, and increasing that uh, aeration to that affected skin. And it helps in the wound healing, uh, that uh, Visarpa healing as well. I do use it regularly. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, the next question is, uh, can we use uh, Pippali Rasayana, Vartamana Pippali Rasayana, after that Manjishta Khwada for Rekta Shodhana and Lepa of the Shangadi Lepa or any specific thylum? Mm, that is a bit more. I don't, don't use that much potent drug in pediatric practice. Vartamana, Tipali, Rasan and everything I do use in Kapacha dominant skin lesion and bit more elder kids. Uh, like um, Vartamana, Tipali I use, usually use only after 10 years. Having it uh, like exacerbation of asthma and Kapacha skin lesion, I use it. But not that uh, high dose as in adult. Uh, Manjishtadi Kashayam again is having a Rasayana property. When the Dosha Shamana is over, I do use it, but not in the acute phase. Uh, Manjishtadi Kashaya for Rekta Shodan and Lebana of the Shangadi Leba for any specific Thailam like Marijadi Thaila in Kapacha, Narayan Vadaja and Jatiadi in Pritaja. No, 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 doctor. I don't usually. Um, Marija, Gukulu Marijadi, I do use in Kabaja skin lesion. When the itching is very much more, I do use Gukulu Marijadi, but uh, for a short duration because uh, uh, baby skin is not that tikshna to accommodate this Marijadi uh, Thaila for a long. So that's all only for three or four days I do use. Narayan Thaila in Vadach, uh, no, skin lesion and Narayan Thaila doesn't have much relation. Uh, Vadaja skin lesion usually uh, is uh, Nalpamaradi, everything goes nicely in Vadaja skin lesion. And Jatyadi, Paitika. Paitika skin lesion actually, uh, Chambaratyadi, Dineshadi, everything goes nice. Jatyadi, uh, he actually, hmm, that's not only for that. Uh, acute stage after the sudden uh, that is for the situation has come to introduce that snehana but wound healing is the main issue then comes the role of jatyadi but not for all the pitta shamana lesions pitta shamana nalpa maradi and uh, is i think it's much more good i'm okay. not sure what the questioner has intended to ask thank you ma'am and the next question is, please share your experience in modifying the medicines in accordance with season. Accordance with season in skin manifestations? Yes, ma'am. Season. Ritu. Even like in seasonal variations will reflect in the skin. And it's actually a guide for you to assess that dosha uh, initiation. No need to alter the medicine according to season. Seasonal fluctuations will increase like Grishma Rudu and everything that uh, Varsha Rudu, that exacerbation of the skin lesion will be the because of the Kala Dushti and everything and which we need more Shodhana in that condition. That is it. Okay, ma'am. 
Ma'am, treatment for vitiligo in children? Treatment for vitiligo is usually kappa dominant stage with a deeper dadu involvement. So, uh, external lepanas, uh, baguji, everything to be externally applied, internal uh, snehana, svedana, and shodana should be the, and repeated shodana should be the. Uh, Krimihara chilsa should also be incorporated in uh, uh, like vitiligo management. It's okay. not a simple disease, it's more deep seated and more prolonged uh, like care should be there. Uh, Dr. Shyam Kumar, you may please yeah. unmute this. Yeah. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Can you hear me? Good evening, ma'am. Sure, yes, sure. You're yes, audible, yes. doctor. Yeah, thanks. I'm always thankful uh, to the platform which have been given uh, by I Weather Map, and also it was a wonderful session uh, to hear. So, uh, ma'am, I, I I have a couple of questions for doubt regarding. So, uh, in terms of carapen, which we are already in, uh, like Kerala treatment, uh, there are different ways of uh, types of carapen, like Nel carapen, uh, Podi carapen. So my first question is, uh, how can we compare with this uh, ectopic dermatitis? And uh, the second question is that, uh, see, uh, there is some uh, doubt regarding that. Some people, uh, some doctors say that uh, during the copulation of uh, male and female, uh, uh, during the period's time, uh, accidentally will, uh, will be a cause for this type of uh, skin eruptions. Uh, so is there any relevancy uh, in the copulation time uh, during the uh, male and female, you know, uh, that copulation period. And uh, that is number se second question. And the third question is that, uh, will this type of ectopic dermatitis will go after an age? That means after five years of age, of six years of age, with third medication also, will it go its own? Okay. So, ma'am, please note these questions. Uh, that is number three. And uh, uh, can you hear me, ma'am? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, and uh, mem, uh, number four, one more, this is the last question. So I had a um, uh, patient in my clinic uh, two days before, and I have read a uh, prescription from Palgat, and uh, one of the doctors have given uh, a, a child of uh, three months or something, uh, they have prescribed a vetumar and guliga for consecutively, for continuously for three months. And also Shwasanandam Guliga, they have given it for, I think it is for uh, uh, some respiratory issues. But I was, uh, you know, quite annoyed by uh, seeing that prescription why because Vetumar and Guliga uh, have uh, Rasa preparation, Chailium is there. And also uh, Shwasanandam Guliga is having some Rasa preparations inside. So if we are giving continuously this for three months for a baby, so what, what uh, you know, it will be, uh, I think it will be a, um, a dangerous situation which is continuously given in those times. So uh, these are the four questions and this is one of the main concern also this uh, dosage regarding this type of medicines. So can you explain ma'am in this detail regarding this? Sure, sure. Uh, the first question Thank was you. your uh, query regarding that uh, carapen and uh, this uh, yeah. atopic dermatitis. Whether this podicarapen and others are uh, can be included under the spectrum of atopic dermatitis. Aragi Kalpudrama has a very elaborate description of Bala Visarpa, and actually, Karapan is an exact tra Malayalam translation for Visarpa. So, I'll call it uh, Kalpudrama is having an elaborate dis description of Visarpa in children. So, uh, like uh, he has. Uh, uh, Actually, every podicarapan, this, uh, everything is not entirely a different skin lesion. Actually, many comes it like a different phases of same disease. It's not every carapan is a part of atopic dermatitis. Uh, like almost 12, 13 carapan comes as a different phases of atopic dermatitis. So it's the uh, one and only text that is Arogya Kalpundruma uh, elaborates the description of every tie, every uh, like uh, this, as I tell you, actually what I presented was a nutshell of this atopic dermatitis management from the Arogya Kalpundruma itself. So for every phase of Arogya Kalpundruma, this Vadika phase of atopic dermatitis is called as, uh, is told as Kodikarapan over that. 
so the uh, the acharya is going on managing that vadiga spectra vadiga atopic dermatitis over that as i narrated in the late phase of my presentation so every every carapan is uh, almost 13 or 12 or 13 carapan comes under the spectrum of atopic dermatitis different phases of atopic dermatitis and many deeper diseases are also told in the spectrum of carapan and uh, uh, atopic dermatitis can be very well managed with aragya kalpadruma but it's an elaborate or hectic task to uh, some uh, by um, uh, to grasp all the factors uh, all the textual narrations of atopic dermatitis and you should be very sincere and uh, uh, very uh, like hard working in the field of dermatology itself and all the preparations many of the preparations narrated in the aragya kalpadruma is not readily available in the market you have to be or dap edi kodutale pattullu it's not that it's not effective it's highly effective in that specific condition kalpadrumam parayna aa marina dap edi kodutale short short result aan but for a beginner i was targeting this class for the beginners so i skipped many of that yoga many of that yoga nalla oru yoga kittatha ക്ലാസിക്കലി കിട്ടാത്ത മാർക്കറ്റിൽ കിട്ടാത്ത യോഗങ്ങൾ ഒന്നുമേ ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞില്ല എക്സെപ്റ്റ് ഫോർ ദാറ്റ് മക്കിപ്പൂവാദിയൊക്കെ പറഞ്ഞില്ലെങ്കിൽ തെറ്റായി പോകുന്ന ഉള്ളത് കൊണ്ടാണ് അത് പറഞ്ഞത് അതർവൈസ് കൽപ്പതിരുമ ഇസ് എ വെരി നൈസ് ടെക്സ്റ്റ് ബട്ട് ഇറ്റ്സ് ഫോർ നോട്ട് ഫോർ ബിഗിനേഴ്സ് ആക്ച്വലി ഇറ്റ്സ് ഫോർ ഡീറ്റെയിൽ ഡെർമറ്റോളജിസ്റ്റിന് വേണ്ടിയിട്ടുള്ള ബുക്കാണെന്നേ ഞാൻ പറയുള്ളൂ ദാറ്റ് മച്ച് ഡീറ്റെയിൽ അതിനകത്ത് കരപ്പനിലുണ്ട് that is i think yeah, that's the answer for my first question and the second question i think i am i'm not clear with whether during that copulation time or like the uh, during that uh, intercourse yeah, or something yeah intercourse i am uh, trying to say during the copulation between uh, yeah during that intercourse time if they are uh, uh, having the sex uh, in the period time uh, accidentally or maybe one or two days after the periods if the uh, complete shodhana of the uh, women's body is not completely done uh, is there a chance for getting skin eruptions like ectopic dermatitis in future for the baby for the baby usually uh, when the population during the menstruating time there is no chance of fertilization there because no ovulation nothing will happen over there no yeah, chance yeah. fertilization but it's an unhealthy practice i mean the shuddhi the proper shuddhi yeah proper shuddhi of the body not, if but, it is not uh, i am yeah. not expert in the field to comment that whether the baby is going to have uh, uh, like uh, atopic dermatitis if the if the couple is having an intercourse during that menstruating period i'm not that sure mm, but if the parents are having an atopic history and if the stress levels of the parents are very high and if the parent is not having practicing that unhygienic practices during that pregnancy period and consuming ahita ahara vihara during that pregnancy period that baby is going to have otherwise uh, i am not sure that whether that population in that um, menstruating time is going to uh, uh, sorry ma'am i'm sorry to interrupt i am not telling about the menstruation time i am just telling uh, the number of days if the from the menstruation uh, after the menstruation completing the menstruation uh it comes of the 10th day or the 11th day uh, for the copulation time period if we are a uh, little bit early for that time uh, means for the intercourse uh, so that, that that is what i am trying to say that i am not sure with doctor i had, okay. i didn't have such an observation till now um, okay 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 um, ma'am we will move to uh, uh, as the time is very late uh, will it go after an age ma'am uh, no 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 it is not going to um, um, subside by uh, with age if the atopic factors are not uh, not handled well enough it's not going to subside after very uh, the after 5 years but usually this atopic triad vanishes like in the ages like puberty when the pubertal hormones set in this atopic uh, all the triads has a chance okay. of getting a uh, bit bit depressed otherwise 5 years is not having a such a role over that it is usually that before 5 years this infantile and childhood eczema gets manifested and if, if the baby is not having an infantile or childhood atopic dermatitis then only the adult comes later so usually and that one 5 years vare karappan illengi later karappan varanla chance koravano nu nikka tell in malayalam 
അതേ ഉള്ളൂ ബിക്കോസ് ഇനി അഡൽറ്റ് ഹുഡ് അറ്റാപ്പ് ഡാമറ്റൈറ്റിസേ ഉള്ളൂ മറ്റു രണ്ടിന് ഫൈവ് ഇയേഴ്സ് മുന്നേ ഓൺസെറ്റ് ഉള്ളത് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ഓൾ okay so ma'am uh, actually you told it as a hereditary also right because one of my patient uh, the, the, the sister uh, one is sister and one is brother both were having this ectopic dermatitis so is it hereditary also will, will it is be because of the stress of the parents or no no is, no it uh, is hereditary this filaggrin gene can get transmitted uh, uh, through generations so that is why okay. the uh, main role for family history over the Okay, family okay. history of atopic is goes always a direct point of for this atopic dermatitis okay so ma'am uh, last question number 4 uh, regarding the vetumaran guliga and shastana please come in ma'am okay. actually vyadhi shamana drugs we are, are are supposed to be given in prescription only for a shorter duration the role for vyadhi sham there are two types of drugs as you are familiar with dosha shamana and vyadhi shamana drugs if you are not able to manage the drugs uh, the situation with dosha shamana you need, need an additional support uh, you can couple a vyadhi shamana drug like vetumaran and shosanandam along with that dosha shamana drug for a shorter duration like 3 days or 1 week or so and when the disease is under control now you have to withdraw the vyadhi shamana drug and then concentrate on dosha shamana if the baby is having baby aged uh, baby having three ma- vetumaran for three months and shwasan the for three months i'm so sorry to say that it's not a uh, uh, good prescription for my good desk yeah oh, yeah what? i was also wondering uh, to see that prescription when i when it came to my clinic so i was advising them also not to give continuously these medicines for you know more than one week uh, yeah so, yeah uh, when a prescription yeah. comes to me like that i usually Uh, don't comment upon and had to give a negative <laughs> comment i usually yeah. uh, skip it like that uh, you know now the situation is well under control uh, we can skip on to another set of medications like something others okay, you can okay. directly skip that medicine without giving a blame for the other doctor uh, yeah, i think that will be better yeah of otherwise course, they will be losing a, like ayurvedalulla vishwasam apova some prescription much Okay okay ma'am thank you very much for the clear it's okay thank you thank you very much thank you ma'am ma'am thank you dr sham kumar ma'am the next question is what is the line of management to be adopted in case of skin lesions associated with tomato fever associated with tomato fever tomato fever skin lesions are also uh, always uh, pythiga skin lesions again the man without oozing that is erythematous basis are the avada with systemic manifestation you can treat directly in pitta jara protocol no issues at all okay ma'am uh, dr pavan kumar wants to ask question ma'am uh, doctor please unmute yourself yes ma'am ma'am how you uh, see uh, skin tuberculosis in ayurveda i have seen skin tuberculosis but uh, uh, i can no mm. i had no much experience in handling the entire duration of skin uh, skin tuberculosis i've seen such case only that much i am not an expert in managing skin tuberculosis i have seen only one or two cases in my entire entire experience thank you thank you so much ma'am for a very detailed session it's almost 2 hours now and thank you so much for your patience thank you for joining with us today i request dr uh, jasul to speak a few words yeah thank you thank you very much for uh, your in a uh, very informative and as well as an interactive session and uh, uh, it, it was a very wonderful session and uh, we have a uh, Uh, we have a lot of participants and uh, from from the beginning itself uh, they attended very well thank you thank you ma'am and uh, thanks to our uh, sponsor uh, dr p alikutis uh, kotakil ayurveda pharmacy also uh, and uh, uh, dr uh, shainas uh, if you have any feedbacks you just mention it okay yeah. yes we have many feedbacks on our chat box that inspiring session wonderful session if anyone wants to speak a few words about the session you're most welcome 
if any participants want to give your feedbacks. Yes, uh, they can uh, raise their hands. Okay. Dr. Ramya? Dr. Ramya, you can unmute yourself. Uh, hello, ma'am. Uh, thank you so much for a wonderful session. Uh, ma'am, I wanted to ask. Um, Using of Haridra Khanda in hay fever. Uh, I'm from UK. So here most of the cases are hay fever during the summer time. Haridra Khanda can be given. Other than that, Rajanyadi could come but your what else can be given? A topic triad manage in the pole at Tanya Venda, Amavastel Jora or Lapadi Tanya no Kanda. A protocol than a Hydra Kanda or a Uziana, Dushi Vishari Guliga Adiana, then Pitta Shamana Ayatala protocol on Adiata. Or a Guduchi Akadina and Allah died. Okay, thank you, Doctor Achina. Hello, madam. In the baby Kundian, upon white patches, Mugutu and then Chitan Ram Indian. Hypopigment patches usually kappa dominant situations are so uh, hypertonic external applications are usually nallada. Geladi ganna churna nalla purcha moorle purkiyeta churo odu gudi externally rabbi ana chiyam parayara utkarsha na ana chiyam parayara. Then after that, cherry uh, oil da niram naringya niram gudi onna rabbi am parayara. Then, in the Gantagan containing your ointment, uh, apply Chiana uh, and Gantagan containing ointment apply Chim at least four times a day. Apply Chim. That's all. Evam Chiyu, a lengthy primitana at Ashta Jurna internally. Thank you, Dr. Achina. Ma'am, there is one special thanks that you had uh, focused your session on for beginners. <laughs> Thank you so much, ma'am, once again for joining with us today. I direct, directed me to do so. <laughs> okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am, for joining with us today. Ma'am, if you don't mind, please, can you share your contact details? Oh, I am poor at the phone. <laughs> okay, th thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. For the very yeah. interactive session, it was uh, highly the participants were very vibrant and interact. Thank you, thank you once again. Okay, thank you. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.